Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's review Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law has a lot in common with Newton's, Newton's law of gravity. So that's why we put on the board over here. We remember from mechanics that Newton's law of gravity tells us that the force between two objects with known masses M1 and M2 will attract one another according to this equation. We have the universal constant of gravity we have the product of the masses divided by the distance between them squared and it is indeed the distance of the center of masses and so that's where this equation came from well Coulomb's law has the exact same format it represents the force between two charges now if they're unlike charges opposite charges they will attract one another if they're like charges they will repel one another but the magnitude of the force will be the same regardless so when we look for the magnitude of the force that is equal to a constant, let's call it k, times the product of the two charges divided by the distance squared. So you can see that the format is exactly the same. The difference is that k is about 9 times 10 to the 9 newton meter squared per coulomb squared. It's more like 8.99, but I, I just like to call it 9, just makes it a lot easier. Then we multiply that times the charges in coulombs, and so this is a positive 5 microcoulombs, which is 10 to the minus 6, and a negative 6 microcoulombs, but we don't care about the sign since we're simply looking for the magnitude of the force. The direction depends upon which charge we're talking about, because notice, if we talk about the, the force on the left charge, it's to the right, and the force on the right charge is to the left. So, it doesn't really matter if we put negative positive down, we simply find the magnitude and then later on we can determine the direction if we want to put it into a vector format. The distance, 2 meters, we square that and then we come up with this value right here. Notice the units for k is newton meter squared per coulomb squared. But sometimes the equation is written like this. Instead of k we write 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught. Now this epsilon sub naught is known as the permittivity of free space and we'll talk about that later but it has to do with the ability of the electric field, and we'll talk about that as well, the effect of the charges to carry through space. And that has a specific constant value that we found, and so we can also write k to be equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, where epsilon sub naught is about 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 coulomb squared per newton meter squared. If you plug in the numbers in crank, you can see that those two charges being two meters apart would have an attractive force of about 0 0.0675 newtons. Now, that's because they're two meters apart and there's not a lot of charge on there. If you increase the charge, if you start putting like a whole coulomb of charge on there, then the forces would become absolutely enormous, as you would see. Anyway, that's the basics of Coulomb's law. We will now learn how to calculate the forces and later on the electric field due to the presence of charges so that this is where it starts that's the basics now we'll show you some examples how to calculate the forces between charged objects and that is how it's done 